a Venice, California-born, Los Angeles-based sports fan, one that has played, coached, announced, and promoted sports my whole life. My love affair with sports started in my own backyard and has led me to this podcast. Thanks to the support of the Amateur Athletic Union in East Bay, I'm excited to bring you Sports Stories with Denny Lennon. On Sunday, January 26, 2020, NBA legend Kobe Bryant, his daughter Gianna, and seven others died as the helicopter they were in crashed in Calabasas, California, en route to a youth basketball competition. 41-year-old Bryant, who was drafted out of high school and played all 20 years of a stellar basketball career for the Los Angeles Lakers, was a complicated man. I never had the chance to meet or interview Kobe. I did, however, meet and interview another ex-Laker great, one who was instrumental in Kobe's career and life, who was also a complex and cerebral person, the Hall of Famer Jerry West, the logo of the NBA. I met Jerry West when I was eight years old in 1972, the year he and the LA Lakers finally won an NBA title. The Lakers practice at nearby Loyola Marymount College, thanks to the connections and kindness of my godfather, Dick Gass. 44 years later, I had a chance to spend half the day and then interview the 80-year-old West at a school on April 14, 2016, the day after Kobe had dropped 60 points in his final game. West, then a consultant for the Golden State Warriors, did not attend Kobe's final game. He was up north watching what he noted was a team accomplishment as the Warriors won their 73rd game of the regular season, an NBA record-breaking achievement. West is as great in the front office building championship teams as he was on the court when he's one of the best players of all time. Number 44, Jerry West, who remains in great shape both mentally and physically, talked about Kobe's last game with me that day. Kobe took 50 shots, he asked me. Give me 50 shots and I'll drop 100. Hilarious. That's the type of competitive drive that mirrored the same drive he recognized in a young Kobe Bean Bryant in 1996. Yes, it was in 1996 one Laker great identified a future Laker great. As general manager of the Lakers, Wes only needed a few minutes of watching the then 17-year-old Kobe work out at the YMCA in Inglewood, which, incidentally, is only three miles away from where we record sports stories. Wes figured out a way to draft the youngster and also managed to bring Shaquille O'Neal to the Lakers, launching another great era in Los Angeles. Despite both Shaq and West eventually heading to different franchises while Kobe stayed with the Lakers, they both spoke of their love for Kobe in the aftermath of the recent accident, as did so many fans. As a longtime Laker fan myself, I marveled at Kobe's ability and determination, his knack for willing his team to victory. He was my son's favorite athlete, once breaking out a 360 dunk while we watched in amazement from the 300 section at Staples Center. I also recognized that he was not always the best teammate. He married young and made a grave mistake as a 24-year-old in 2003 and was on the verge of leaving the Lakers in 2004 before Wes talked some sense into him. In the final tally as a player, he racked up numerous accomplishments, including five NBA championships. But it was the post-NBA Kobe that I, like many, truly marveled at. He not only managed to win an Academy Award for his animated short film, Dear Basketball, but he found out something that so many of us know, that being a parent, and in his case, a girl dad, is a reward on another level. Kobe made his biggest play after he finished playing. He, like always, led by example. A father of four girls, he now had a chance to be attentive to his girls and supported them in the public place where so many of us congregate, the world of youth sports. His oldest, 17-year-old Natalia, is a volleyball player. Next up was Gianna, a promising basketball player. He was calm when he coached, gracious towards fans, and tried his best to be a respectful sports dad. He used his position to advocate for women's sports, be it collegiate or professional. ESPN sportscaster L. Duncan told her emotional story of meeting Kobe, setting off the hashtag girl dad social media explosion. If you've not seen the report, do yourself a favor and look it up. The piece hit as close to home as something could hit. I'm a proud girl dad, and fortunately, I was able to coach my own daughter for years. 
as a dad, I know that if you do it properly, you can teach life lessons through sports. As a coach, I have also been lucky enough to work with many people's daughters for 35 years. I've coached boys who have become men, and they are proud to be called girl dads. Kobe was right. He said what all us dads know. Girls are the best. When the news came in that Sunday that Gianna and two of her teammates were on board, that hit the hardest for me. While I did not normally or ever use a helicopter for commuting to games, I did commute often with young athletes all over Los Angeles. You become close over long drives, over hanging out, before and after games, and through competing together. I thought about guests I've interviewed for this podcast just in the last few months who are proud girl dads, like AAU President Roger Gowdy and his daughter, Taylor, Super Bowl champ Peter Bulware and his three girls, and a soon-to-be-published episode with Laker broadcaster Chris McGee, who has two daughters, Millie and Luca. I reflected on many of the young athletes and their families, and it's sad that something like this has to remind us how fortunate we are to have these special times with our children. Among the many young athletes I've coached is a group of five sisters, Ryan, Jordan, Marley, Avery, and Darren Rice. They now range in ages from 34 to 23, but I had the chance to coach them when they were about the same age as Gianna Bryant and her teammates. I've known their girl dad, Scott Rice, for close to 20 years. On the Thursday after the crash, I visited the fan-generated memorial at LA Live across from the Staples Center with my daughter, Sienna, and Scott's daughter, Marley. It was overwhelming, and the part of it that resonated with me were the emotion tied to the most important part of Kobe, of him being a father. It was the day after that visit, I sat down to interview Scott about being a girl dad of five. Scott and his wife, Megan, had a unique method for naming their girls, which will be broken down in the interview that follows. Scott and I have enjoyed plenty of our daughter's games together. We've enjoyed plenty of Laker games together. We marveled at Kobe as an athlete, but we really respected him as a dad. Kobe often turned to Jerry West for advice throughout his life, West serving as a second father for Kobe. While I didn't have a direct relationship with the legendary teacher, UCLA basketball coach John Wooden, I have nonetheless looked to his words to better understand being a coach, a teacher, and a parent. Here, Coach quotes a favorite, then explains the importance of setting a good example. Well, the example is uh, the greatest teaching thing we have. Uh, I once heard something said, uh, no written word, no spoken plea can teach our youth what they should be, nor all the books on all the shelves. It's what the teachers are themselves. Well, a coach, that's all he is, is a teacher, and I think your actions can determine to a great deal the actions of those under your uh, supervision. So uh, I, I tried, I tried to, uh, not to get too involved. Yeah, you're going to get excited, you know. Mm -hmm. But I taught 40 years, and I had two technicals, and one I didn't deserve. <laughs> uh. I, 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 didn't, I didn't mention the fact that there might have been many times I would have deserved one and didn't get it, but <laughs> we'll forget those. My guest today, Scott Rice, was a coach and an athletic director at an all-boys school before he switched jobs to one that allowed him time to see his girls play sports after school. That's a girl dad move that the Mamba would respect. And so now here's my interview from the 7428 studio with five-time girl dad, Scott Rice. All right, here we go. Make shot, baby. At the line. Stop ball game. <laughs> no time left on the clock. Oh! <laughs> it's <in> overtime! <laughs> hey! There's a lot of pressure on that shot. <laughs> there's a lot of pressure. I it's, thought I had it. It's not easy. You know, there's been some high level people. But the yeah. finger roll at the end was great. It was pretty good, actually, clean up. It's a pretty good clean up there, Scotty. Good. Yeah. Close enough for rock and roll. There it is. It's a big shot. It's a big shot. Uh -huh. Um. 
But your um, daughter gave you the assist. Or, oh, no, I gave you the assist, huh? No, okay. I think Sienna did. She did? Oh. Yeah. Okay. Hit me right in stride. Fair enough. So I was um, thinking, Scott, that uh, we probably met in about the mid-'80s. Yeah, I think probably, so. Huh? Probably in the mid-'80s. So we got a, a good, uh, you know, 15 years to more in our belt. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I was going to say more like 20, but, uh, you know. Yeah, we'll come, uh, that'll come up at the Olympics. <laughs> we'll celebrate. Um, so this, um, this particular episode, um, Marley, our fine producer and your middle daughter, fair enough, yes. um, came up with the idea, uh, based on the hashtag that has emerged, uh, with girl dad for Kobe. And so I just kind of want to note that that was last Sunday or now on a Friday, uh, when we heard about, uh, Kobe going down and then, um, last night was at, uh, LA live. And it was really moving, you know, the city's tribute to him at there um, and all of that. And so tonight the Lakers will do their thing. And so we thought with Sports Stories we'd like to do something with the uh, the, the man I know of the most daughters. With a girl dad. <laughs> girl, five. The ultimate girl dad. Yeah, <laughs> yeah absolutely. So um, I'm sure you, you're probably like like I was, you know, shocked when, when you heard about Kobe going down. But then it was like a gut punch when you realized that Gianna was on that – yeah, well, it was a gut punch because it wasn't just Kobe and Gianna. I mean, there was yeah. there was three little girls on that. Right, <sighs> right. And that really, I'm sure, hit it for both of us. Um, both of us haven't been, you know, me with one daughter, but you with five involved. And um, so anyways, um, I'll refer to your daughters collectively by their first initials, which is RJ Mad. <laughs> RJ Mad. Okay. So that'll, yeah. that'll clean that up. <laughs> <laughs> yes okay that makes sense um what um do you, what do you remember um especially coming out here and 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 including in on the lakers were you um were you previously like a detroit fan or well something? i was a uh, magic johnson fan you yeah know, i watched him play sure. at lansing everett and sure yeah oh, that's right you watched him in high school yeah, didn't you I watched him in high school and then he was wow, in wow. michigan state and you know it was just kind of coincidental that he came out here and I also, you know, I graduated from college, and it's like, well, the teaching jobs in Michigan weren't really all available, and, okay. and one of the places I could go where I had reciprocity for my teaching certificate was California, so that's wild. I, I came I out here. You and watched then, uh, Magic in high yeah. school. That's right. You told me that. Well, um, actually, let's back up just like a little bit. Oh, and by the way, I should give a shout out to Dom Flores. <laughs> who also has a lot of daughters. Yes. Yes. I just yes. wanted and to. And was the coach and, for and, Marley. And, 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 and a uh, coach in connects here. Um, so born in what, 1960 or? or 59. 59. I'm so, a 50s baby. So um, Ike was the president then. Way to go. Okay. Wow, you cover a couple more than I do. <laughs> um, and then what about your parents? How come uh, they ended up in Michigan? Uh, well, they were pretty much in that area all along. My dad was from Chicago and mm. my mom was from up north Michigan, Charlevoix. Mm. So I think they met at Central Michigan. Okay. And, uh, oh, Central Michigan, sure. Yeah, so just always kind of been the Midwest area there. You know, started off in Shalavoy. I was born in Shalavoy. Oh, you uh, are. Then we moved down to Wyoming, Michigan. Wyoming. Um, mm -hmm. Now, what uh, mil uh, elementary school did you go to? Southwest Elementary, which mm -hmm. was awesome because it was like two blocks away from my house. So just Walk walking right in, there. yeah. Wasn't that your uh, local paper or something like the Southwest Advocate or something like that? No, something there, there was like a Wyoming Advocate, oh, I think, or something advocate. like that. Okay. But, yeah, no. um, and then middle school? Middle school was New Hall, New, New Hall. Hall Junior High School, the Huskies. Do you remember getting involved in sports like in, in, in middle school or elementary school or is this always oh, part just, of your life? Yeah, my dad was a coach, so oh, I was really? just pretty much a gym rat, uh, you know. And nice. I say more like a gym mouse because I wasn't big enough to be a rat, <laughs> but I was always there bothering people. Nice. And then um, middle school, did, did you plan on organized teams about that age? Yeah, I think I, I, even elementary school we had organized mm -hmm. basketball and played even in elementary school. Anybody besides your father that you kind of remember that helped you out or was a coach or kind of guided you well? Uh, yeah, well, I mean, there was plenty in our neighborhood, you know. Uh, he had a football coach that mm -hmm. coached football for us every year, uh, Mr. Conrad. Mm -hmm. He was awesome, and he was mm -hmm. a you know, big influence in getting us all playing football nice. for the Huntington Wood Archers. I like it. See, I love yeah. – both you and I have been involved in, in coaching, and I would I just like getting shout outs to the ones who, who yeah. are right out of the gate with when you start playing and stuff, and especially in the Midwest, um, 
you know, states like Ohio and Michigan and so forth, they hold the co- football coaches in particular hold such a, a status yeah. in the uh, community, you know? Yeah. You know, basketball coaches too. Sure. Yeah, my dad was a basketball coach and he was loved. And then um, off to what was um, high school, Wyoming Park, right? Wyoming Park, yes. The now merged into. Yeah, it's merged into a just Wyoming High School. Mm-hmm. Used to be two schools there, Wyoming Park and Rogers. And was, was Rogers your big rival? Well, they, yeah, yes and no. They, they don't think they were in our conference. Oh, so, okay. you know, we had other rivals in the conference, but we always have a game. And, yeah, they're. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> um, so tell me a little bit about playing in high school. Uh, well, I was, uh, playing basketball, football, and, uh, then I had the off season cause I didn't play baseball anymore. I think I got turned off to baseball in little league cause I took a shot off the chest with baseball and I said, this is hard. <laughs> I'm not going to lie to you. That ball hurts. That hurts. <laughs> and not just then, but like a couple of days later, I'm just like, wow, that still hurts. It's worse uh, than getting hit in football. Yeah. Um, and basketball, your freshman year, i um, curious, did you go out for like the, was there a freshman team, JV team, that kind of stuff? Yeah, JV. Yeah. So you're on JV. So JV. And the freshman year is when you, uh, well, it's ninth grade, actually is, is Newhall Junior High. We didn't go till 10th grade. Oh. We went to, to okay. the high school. Okay, that so makes then, sense. That's right. So then you're on the JV team there, and, and then as a junior, then you're on the varsity. So I noticed, because, um, you know, we do some heavy research by your mm-hmm. senior year, which would have been 76. You graduated 77. Is Correct. That right? So 76 would have been, you went 9-0 and in football. Yes. Wow. Yeah. What positions did you play? Uh, tailback and cornerback. Nice. Yeah. Wow, 9-0. 9-0. But didn't a, get to go to playoffs. No, they had some kind of we- weird system where right. it was a points-based system, but, uh, you know, you couldn't have more teams come out of the West than the East and – that's wild, we were right? Up there. I think oh, we, we oh, so ge- geographical yeah. played some part in it. Yeah, but it's kind of like the football thing now, where it's you know the top four teams for college get to go, and yeah. then that team that ends up fifth. It's like, man, we were so close. Man, you guys, <laughs> yeah, you were nine and zero, and you and you kind of smoked everybody. Yeah. But then I was I was looking at the at your um you know sanctioning body, and I guess there was thirty five undefeated teams in the state, and eleven, only eleven of those qualified for the playoffs or something like that. Oh, so really? they must have only taken a few to playoffs. They yeah, probably, they probably didn't take a lot. No, no, I okay. think it was four. Yeah. But a nine and zero run. Mm. You, did you guys feel good about that? Well, yeah, it was uh, it was great because I think we had just such a great team, you know. Mm. So that every every position we had players that, you know, were, were doing their job. Coach uh, Jack Verduin? Verdine. Verdine. Yes. And what'd you <clears> learn? Um, what'd you learn from being part of both football or basketball that served you later in life? Well, I think just being involved in sports, you know, there's just so many positive things about being involved in sports. You you get to have that camaraderie, you know, with your teammates and mm-hmm. it forces you to do a lot of uh, exercise. Mm-hmm. You get a lot of practice and exercise. You got to be in shape. So you know, there's just a lot of benefits and, you know, there's there's just nothing like it. And, yeah. you know, fortunately, you know, I w- was playing on a lot of teams where we, we had wins. Mm-hmm. So it's always more fun to be on a winning team. No doubt. Mm-hmm. You got uh, – and you got to be on time. Got to remember your stuff. Yeah, well <laughs> – These are all good training. <laughs> These are all good training for later in life. <laughs> it's like <laughs> – <laughs> Yeah. Um, so now you're going to move on from there and you decide to play football at um, in college. Hope College, Holland, Michigan. Holland, Michigan. Um, and I'd like to make note that they're called the Dutchman. The Flying Dutchman, yes. Did you ever get put in a Dutch oven? Uh, no, I have no. never been put in a Dutch <laughs> okay, oven. that's good. I'm looking forward to we, we it. We had a guest who, who, got, <laughs> who got dirty Dutched, and, and that did not go well for his broadcasting career at that point. <laughs> he came back, though. Um, so tell me a little bit about Hope College and understand, you know, it didn't, you know, you had a, uh, accident there that kind of got you out of sports or something. Yeah. Right? Yeah. It was, you know, uh, one of those things where maybe playing basketball and football. So now mm. I had, you had to focus. So it's like, well, I just want to focus on football. Mm-hmm. So went in my freshman year and, uh, you know, it was all right. I was, I was doing okay, but it was on the JV and, okay. and I felt like, you know, like the starting position at tailback was, was right for me next year. So, uh, I mean, I think I worked out that summer more than I'd, I've ever worked out. Uh, I had a workout Got buddy after. named John Hartman who worked me out. He was nice. like, he was one of those maniacs that just <laughs> loved to pump some weights. So I got in, in the best shape of my life there and came back my sophomore year, and I was, you know, was feeling good. But okay. then uh, I had one game where I got hit and 
so I was just laying on the ground there and I, I couldn't really lift my head very well and so somebody oh, reached down and helped me up and I'm just kind of dizzy and wow. they said are you all right and I said mm, I don't oh. think so so I went off and, uh, and then got some x-rays and found out that I'd split a little bone in my neck wow that's yep. scary I said no more football for you and it's fortunate that actually they found that you did that yeah you know because you know very well could have gone un- undiagnosed and yeah been a much much more difficult situation yeah so is, is that where you finished up college yeah, hope. you did. Yeah, you went. You, okay, so you went through there and got a degree in what? Uh, I ended up getting a bachelor's degree in biology. Okay, biology. Yeah. Um, and then did you stay, stick around for a bit, or, or you headed out west? I headed out west. And 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 explain that again about your degree allowed you to start teaching right away. Right. Is that right? Yeah, there was only a few states that you know your Michigan certificate was going to be okay to start teaching. Then when I got out here, I had to take a few classes to get it certified in California. Oh, okay. But uh, I could nice. start teaching, yeah. And so did you uh, make plans in advance of leaving Michigan, or you just came out here and was winging it, baby? No, I think it all just boiled down to sitting there and talking about it with a friend. It's like, I don't think I'm going to have to leave Michigan because I don't think I'm going to get a job here. And I said, maybe I have to go to California. And he said, I'll go. <laughs> so there was two of us, and <laughs> we said, all right, let's do it. Let's, and we just like, sold everything we own and bought a little camp trailer and – Little pop up tent trailer really? and pulled it out here and nice. it, yeah. Uh, wait, well, did you did it? Was the auto industry still? I mean, was it on the rebound? Because I know gas prices were exorbitant in the seventies, and that really hit parts of the Midwest hard. Yeah, and so I don't know if that was tied into how you know your family was making was a living or anything. Totally tied into the whole Michigan economy, which sure. I think was why teachers were getting left off, let go because oh, okay, that makes sense. Yeah. Because the auto industry wasn't doing so well, so oh, then wow. everybody that supplied them was not doing well. So, and then I suppose some form of irony you got in a car and drove mm-hmm. west. Yeah. And um, did you guys stop along the way? Was there like a road yeah. trip? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, we stopped. It's and we beautiful, found little right? little places that we can put up our tent trailer. And that's hang, cool. Hang. Yeah, we stopped in Utah, and I was like, man, it was so beautiful in Utah. We just stayed there for a few days. Like, oh, just hang out here for a little bit. Excellent. Okay. Cool. So, yeah. where was your first? Uh, what was your first California experience? Uh, well, got out here and, uh, ended up going to Malibu RV park oh, nice. and looking for jobs. And, uh, also went down to San Diego, just going everywhere, looking for jobs. And actually thought I was going to be working in, uh, La Jolla because mm. there, there was a job there for me. But, uh, then the guy that I came out with had gotten a really good job out here and Los Angeles and we were living together and so I'd also got a couple of job offers around here so I was gonna start working at Mary Star of the Sea Oh! but then I got a call from some place that I went to uh, from Yeshiva University of Los Angeles at the last second and they said uh, are you interested in you know being the athletic director because our athletic director is leaving and you know we because i went to interview for the science job there oh i see okay and uh so i started talking about that and i was like wow here's it i can just take yeah, over yeah, this yeah. whole program so, this is so perfect. explain um some people may not know yeshiva it, it would be orthodox orthodox yeah yeah orthodox jewish um schools is there a, there's a series of them right oh yeah is there's there, lots of different there's, there's lots of them and that's so, why it's yeshiva so the, but this University one in los, los angeles is significant yeah it's, it's because you know it's a, it's a big urban area and and it's like one of their I don't know uh, what they call one of their hallmarks or one of their more important um, schools. Yeah. And, yeah. and communities. I'm sure they would agree. Those are heavy hitting rabbis over there. Yeah. Yeah. And so you, so you get the AD job there. Yes. That's awesome. Yeah, like, it was awesome. And wow. it's like the, just stepping into the Orthodox Jewish community, which I knew nothing about, you know, so it was a learning experience for me. And it was all boys. All boys. Yeah. And so w- tell me about, um, so, so did you, you immediately hired yourself to coach what sports? Uh, well, we had basketball and baseball going. Okay. So those were the two that we had going. And then ultimately got some track days, just like a, a conference meet, just a track meet. Got that going. About what year is this? Like, um. 81. 81. Okay. Yeah. So that's wild. All right. So now you're, um, you're at Yeshiva. Were you enjoying coaching and doing all this? Oh yeah. It was yeah. great because I mean, there, there was just no real like sports going on at that time and so once we started like competing and and actually winning i mean everybody was just jazzed and so it's like well we needed to get new uniforms we needed to do this we need to you know like beef up the program and i remember like as walked into you know rabbi hire's office and turns out he's like one one of the biggest rabbis on the west coast 
and I just walked into his office, you know, because they told me I should go ask him if we could get some, some uniforms. And his secretary stopped me and said, excuse me, what are you doing? I said, well, I was supposed to talk to Rabbi Heyer about getting some uniforms. And she yeah. says, well, do you have an appointment? And I go, like, no. And she says, well, who are you? <laughs> I said, I'm Coach Rice. Uh. And so she, she gets on the phone, talks to Rabbi Heyer, and says, there's a Coach Rice here to see you. And, of course, he, he had known because, you know, the, the sports was going. And, uh, yes. Exactly. Everybody's in, all the rabbis so were coach totally o, into coach the Coach always gets to walk in. Yeah. <laughs> so he, he brought me right in and said, what do you need? And I said, new uniforms. And so he said, oh, hold on a second. And he, he picks up the phone. And he asks somebody if, if they'd be willing to buy some new uniforms. And then he hangs up. And he says, just get whatever you want. We'll, we'll, we'll go ahead and we'll figure it uniform. out. Yeah. The boys need some new uniforms. So. I know a guy who knows a guy. Yeah, we'll take care of this. That's awesome. Yeah, well, it was That's it was great. it was good too. And because, they probably needed to. Oh yeah, and it's you know those type of things that you know that make the teams so like wow. Oh yeah, it's exciting. We've got new uniforms, and you know, oh, so we just kept trying like to it. to ramp up the program. And uh, and this is interesting because um, I mean now that I put the the um, years on it because it's right when Magic came out, so he would have won eighty one seventy nine, and then he won his rookie year, and so he's already a thing in Los Angeles. Yeah. And then, you, you know, you come out at the same time, and you're like, yeah, I saw that guy play in high school. In high school, yeah. yeah that's cool. All right, so now, um, how, how long did you stay at Yeshiva? Uh, ten years. Ten years. So let's move uh, forward a little bit. We're 84, 1984, and the Olympics are coming to Los Angeles. Mm-hmm. And I think, if I'm right, doesn't uh, isn't this about where you meet your future wife? Yes. How, how did that happen? Uh, well, the marathon was getting, it was running right down Pacific and we lived on Paloma there. So we had, who, who uh, lived on Paloma? We both did. Oh, okay. Yeah. Megan and I. So she, she, yeah. she lived in one like unit or something yeah. or, and then another. So I have this right here, um, which is the marathon reference points and it's kind of cool. Um, uh, found it in like this document 84. Oh, nice. So it pretty much shows like all the different elevation stuff. So the race started at Santa Monica college. And then it came back around here, and so it looks like what it met up with you guys right around here, Pacific. There it is. And here's what's crazy: is it, was it the women's race? No, it was the men's. I it think. was the men's yeah. race because that was like on, like a week later after the women's. Because mm-hmm. I went down, so I lived in Venice, and both times the men and the women came by. I came to the corner of Pacific and Washington, and would just like lock my bike there. And then and that's where um, I watched. And that's where I would watch yeah. it go by because it was so exciting to have the Olympics in Los Angeles. Oh right! It and was here's so an cool. event that you can see. I mean, I tried to get tickets to all those Olympic events, and I think I ended up getting baseball and fencing. <laughs> yeah, I got um, water polo, and I got to see the bronze medal game of volleyball, which was kind of cool. Yeah. But uh, water polo was fine. I just right. wanted to be at the game. Me too. Diving. We went to go see diving. Yeah. Greg Louganis, I think it was. Yeah. And I think he hit his head that day. And, oh. Wow. Was that those games? Wow. Yeah. How trippy. Now tell me, you met your um, your future wife Megan amongst right. what standing there watching the the, the um, uh, marathon or what? <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, I noticed that she had these wacky sandals on that I thought I was the only one that owned. They're those the massage sandals. Okay. And back in that day, not very many people wore those massage sandals, <laughs> and they because when you first put them on, they they hurt, you know. So I I call them the cruel shoes, <laughs> but once you once you get them worn in, they're they're pretty nice. And I looked down and I said something about hey. You've got those cruel shoes on, so she didn't know what I was talking about. But then I said, "Look, at I have those too." You know, so I was like, "We both had the cruel shoes." And <laughs> That's what it started, huh? Yeah. All right. Um, so now you got a chance, and, and you meet her. Um, you know, it's interesting too because I know when I watched the women's uh, marathon, it was the first time the women were allowed to run the marathon in the Olympics. Oh wow! Because um, because I think way back when something went wrong in some distance race. And so then when they hit the two-kilometer mark was right around the area where I was, and that marked the furthest any women had run in the Olympics ever. And it was kind of like, to me, I felt yeah. like it was long overdue. Yeah, that's history in the making. Yeah, and I just felt like it was long overdue. Like I felt, wow, this Olympics guys must move really slow. Like women right. are doing this everywhere. Yeah. Like <laughs> just as, you know, right? Yeah, and you would think of any any sport that this would be one that they, you know, would want because it's just so popular around the world now megan is um i learned this recently i knew she was from dallas texas area but she went to highland park yes we just had a guest in here who also went to highland park high school which was wild it yeah was like, it was like oh that hurts her, her mom went there you know small world so, yeah it was kind of wild but um and i wanted to make note because i just don't want to forget this that don henley was from texas 
and Glenn Fry was from Michigan. They met in Los Angeles and formed the Eagles. Uh huh. So That's now you from Michigan, Megan from Texas, me we met and, you and formed the Rice R. Girls. R.J. Mad, yes. Yes. Not bad. Okay. <laughs> Not both, bad bo- at both all. Both have made their marks. <laughs> um, coaching at the time. So you, you did your time at Yeshiva. Yes. Had you, um, so you'd only coach boys to this point. Had you thought much about you know, coaching girls or it just didn't really cross your mind? Well, it was an interesting, interesting situation at Yeshiva because, um, you know, they're the Orthodox – population is into the, the modesty for, mm-hmm. for women. So mm-hmm. uh, they didn't really want me to, to be helping out with, with the girls program initially, mm-hmm. you know, but the, after a while, you know, when they got to know me and it's like, you know, and I'm now I'm married. And uh, so it's like, then they said, well, we're having a difficult time finding good girls coaches and, you know, can you go help out with the, the girls? So, so I started going to some of the girls' practices and helping out. Hmm. And also at that time, too, is like then they, they needed – I was teaching science as well. Hmm. So they needed a science teacher at the girls' school, so I started teaching science at the girls' school, too. What Did, what, did you notice any um, differences out, out of the gate of coaching um, boys and girls? Well, I wasn't really coaching the girls at hmm. that point. Um, but, yeah, I mean, the, the difference for them was, was pretty – different because the boys are always playing basketball and just you know and the girls are starting from you know uh, ground zero pretty mm-hmm. much there we're teaching them a yeah, lot of your basics they didn't necessarily grow up playing it exactly mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah. yeah and i'm not sure it was really encouraged you know so you know when as which is great because then you know when we grew up i think title nine came around and yeah like the 70s in and all of a sudden 70s, you right. know it was something that girls we're encouraged to do. That's right. You know, so that, you know, get them going in sports. And yeah, so it's a great thing. So it's, it's, it's interesting, like, as, as we get into this point, because um, one of the things that was that, that I like, you know, there's so many things that people are memorializing about Kobe, but, and he, and he was a complicated guy. So there's no getting beyond that. But um, the thing that I like, that's getting so much attention is he was really dedicated towards, moving his girls forward and seeing athletics being a central part of their life and promoting and championing girl sports. Yes. And so now you're a big um, sports fan. Yes. At this yeah. point. Yeah. When we're talking the mid eighties yeah. or whatever and, and you got married and, and now you're going to start having girls. Mm-hmm. But what I found interesting was um, what I've always found interesting was you tended to name them after athletic people that you knew at the time which your frame of reference would, of course, be men because there's no real right. women athletics. Yeah. You know, there's no real women's pro sports yeah. domestically. So, yeah, like, like Ryan, uh, I think just because it was a, an, an interesting name for yeah. a girl in the first place. And, and so that was named after? Well, I think that I was thinking of Nolan Ryan, uh-huh. you know. Yeah, sure. Yeah, it's, like, the it's like he grass, was. The greatest fastball pitcher of yeah. all time. <laughs> great, great pitcher. Hall of Famer. Yeah, and then, of course, Jordan. Yep, Jordan. Uh, well, we know. Yeah. Another Hall of Famer. Yeah. So your first two would be a baseball Hall of Famer as Ryan mm-hmm. and then um, Jordan Rice, who uh, Michael Jordan, Hall of Famer. Correct. Basketball, yep. perhaps greatest player ever, perhaps. Yeah. And then the next one. Well, my wife would think that it was from, like, the Great Gatsby or something. It's like, oh, no. no. So, okay. <laughs> okay. That's fine. <laughs> yeah. We'll go with okay. that. Hilarious. <sighs> okay. Then, then how'd you get this Marley one by? Uh, well, I think Marley was a, like Dan Marley. Sure. I just like that name. I think I, it's I kinda, Central Michigan University. He was Central yeah. Michigan. But I mean, you went from two Hall of Famers to a three time NBA All Star. Now, he was a first round pick. Yeah. But you didn't know it at the time. You thought maybe he might be one of the greats. I just thought he was a great guy. Okay. Yeah. And, you know, Central Michigan. So, Central Michigan. He, he, he grew up, what, 150 miles from where you did? I don't know Something where he grew like up. That. I yeah. went to school there. Did yeah, he? Yeah, wasn't, up? wasn't far oh, away. Okay. From where he was born. That's, yeah. Okay. Um, and now, you, oh, so the spelling's different. Did you think about that at all, or you, or you just kind of rolled with? Yeah, the, the I, I just it? thought that he was spelling his name a little bit too weird, so because <laughs> yeah. uh, so we went a little more phonetically. I <laughs> this think. <is> great. <laughs> all right, so at this at at this point now, um, you got three girls. Yes. So here comes the next one. Yes. And and are you watching a lot of basketball this time? Oh, tons! Yeah, <laughs> okay. uh, I mean, I'm I'm coaching basketball. It's funny because I thought I was going to come out here and coach football. Yeah, you know, I mean, basketball was kind of for me like my second sport, 
And then I came out and, you know, there was no football. So I'm coaching basketball and baseball. Right. And, of course, I told you how much I love baseball. You know, I mean, I love baseball. I love watching and I love coaching, but uh, I just I wasn't a player. Mm. So, I, yeah, I just thought maybe I'd coach football. And now I'm coaching basketball. And all of a sudden I'm realizing that, you know, basketball is just an awesome sport. Of course. And I'm, I think I'm so glad that I'm coaching basketball because, I mean, you're right there and, and you're able to, you know, bark out instructions right on the fly. You can you make know? a real difference on a team with just one player. And if one player really takes to your coaching and moves it forward, it's, yeah. it's brilliant. So this next one comes out, and you go with Avery. Yes. Avery Johnson, maybe? Yeah, I think Avery yeah. Johnson was, uh, you know. 1999 NBA Nobody champ. Nobody has a better smile than Avery Johnson, I think. <laughs> Multiple teams. <laughs> he was he was some. And so at this point, are you going like, uh, you know, is we going to get a boy in the mix? You know, um, at that point, I'd pretty much given up on thinking that I could make boys, uh, thinking that I'm just a girl dad, you know, that's, that's all I am. That's, you, that's you what were, I make. If there was a hashtag back then. If there was, yeah. You would have started it. Yeah. 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 Okay. So um, now the next one comes. This would be the fifth girl. Yes. And uh, it's another girl. It's another girl. And at this time, you were a big fan of the Kennedy High School Basketball player? I don't know. I, that was I the think uh, we'd MVP get, I at think the we'd... McDonald's uh, no. All-Star Tournament? <laughs> that guy, Darren Day? No, you don't even know Darren Day. Uh, I don't know exactly where – it was weird. It was just a roundabout way, I think, that we got to Darren, and uh, it was uh, all not sports-related. But uh, okay. but a good friend of ours was in a band called the Larry Tate Experience. Hmm. Like Larry Tate from uh, Bewitched? Yes, awesome yes what did they play oh they just you know cover stuff and you know they were just a great band that's fun and i think uh you know to honor them because we had lost um a couple of members of that band and oh, okay yeah so we uh th- were thinking bewitched and we were thinking uh you know Ooh. darren the, the darren that changed into darren and they, right that they thought nobody would notice right everybody noticed yeah everybody noticed and uh, so that that was the only Darren that we Durwood. could even think that it was associated with. But I think for me it was more like, uh, you know, my sister's name is Karen. Okay. So I went with Darren. Tell me what it was like. You're a coach. You have you have these girls coming up. Um, now, now this was around the time you and I had met because mm-hmm. you put them in the Catholic school over at St. Mark's in Venice. Correct. And you yeah. guys were right down there um, uh, in Venice on Paloma where you mentioned. And um, so we got a good sports program going. But you're also a coach. Yes. So this has got to be fun for you. And did you um, immediately just say, let's go, girls, let's, let's do it? Park, oh, yeah. park leagues, YMCA's, whatever. Mm, yeah. Well, I mean, it started before that. I mean, it, we were just with Ryan, you know, we're trying to get – I just wanted him to be doing something active. Mm-hmm. You know, Ryan was not going to be in team sports, but she's, you know, got into – doing some taekwondo or something yeah. like that. Just We're just trying to find something sports-wise so that they're getting some physical activity and, and also being involved. And then, uh, you know, Jordan, you know, she seemed to be more interested in having, mm-hmm. you know, team sports going on. So, yeah, we were trying to encourage that whenever we could. And um, I'd off, often, like, look to you and Megan um, as one of those families that I was always searching for at high schools, too that not only had a bunch of kids that were playing sport, but were up for anything. What? Yeah. Alhambra, Saturday morning, 7 o'clock, see you there. Oh, yeah. Well, you know what? We got to go, you know, we're driving down to Orange County for a Christmas tournament. Sounds like a blast. Yes. I mean, more you guys are always up more tournaments. Yeah. The more games, the better. Yeah, that's just and, all part and, of the experience. And then, and then you're also the ones who would bring along the ones who didn't have a ride. Yeah. You know, so you were that. And, and I don't know, can you talk a little bit about both being a sports dad, but being a, you know, also being a coach and just those early mornings and just being yeah, part of the whole sports it was, scene. It's funny because I think it was at that time that I gave up coaching because I started, you know, enjoying watching my girls play so mm-hmm. much, you know, it's like I'm, I'm working all the time because you have practices after school and, you know, it's late nights and, so I, I decided that I was going to get a job where I might be able to, you know, finish teaching, you know, three o'clock and mm-hmm. and then be able to come and, and watch my daughters play mm-hmm. you know, because that was important to me. So I, I gave that up and that's where I started working at, at the center. And, uh, you know, it, was, it allowed me then to be free in the afternoons and come watch my daughters play. And uh, 
it's awesome. It's just yeah, it was, it is, it's the best. Yeah, I, I mean it, it's hard. Um, I mean sport sports in general are just so bonding for a community, and it's so fun to go watch your kids play and stuff. But um, yeah, and I think having, it's important for the kids to have have their parents there too. You and know, have their parents and see there. that they're supporting them. Right. I you know you would often you you hear them and they don't always tell you, but yeah. they know you're there. Right. They know you're there. Um, and I think my daughters probably knew I was there more than other people's daughters because I, I would occasionally get loud in the crowd. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. So the referees seem to know who you were. <laughs> That's the way I will put this. I also well, love, you know, when you're um, a coach, you have to help the referees out. If they make a mistake, they need to know. They're just education. Yeah, they're just, just education. Yeah, just helping people. you out. Um, I also loved uh, Megan's father, and he had that whistle mm -hmm. where he would whistle for the girls um, when they would do something really good. And it would get him or so, it so fired up. Even adequate. <laughs> yeah, even adequate. Yeah. <laughs> it would get him so fired up, and they would just yeah. feed off of that. <laughs> it was so fun. Um, so those were those were some really good times. Yes. We um, so we we had some success, but I, I need you to help me out with something. Out of your <sighs> your five girls, um, only one won the championship of the Los Angeles Catholic Youth Organization, and that was in in basketball. Uh huh. Right. So she would be the one out of them that has the championship. Would you, would would you be able to tell me which one it was, and could you find her in that picture? Ah, uh, yes, I can find her in that picture. Yes, it's Jordan right oh. there. So Jordan, <laughs> the one who's named after the Hall of Famer, right? You yeah. know, the greatest ever. Yeah. She got the title. Now, does now your girls have got pretty good sports sportsmanship overall? Does she does she hold that over the other girls at like Christmas and stuff? Uh, you know, I don't think she does because she's too nice to be yeah. doing that. But I would, right? Yeah, that's what, that's I'm the first thing I would point to. <laughs> I just point to that. Yeah, but that was um, I don't know if you remember that was a fun run that year. Uh, we took on some pretty uh, good teams, but we'd been coming after that for a while. Yes, like we got into a few finals. Yeah, and came so up close. short. Yeah, and then we were always going down to that Christmas tournament over the break. In Orange County, playing those double enrollment schools that were huge. Right. Right? So we'd put in the work. And then that team actually played in a summer league against older kids. Right. So we were ready to go. Yeah. And that, that was, was fun. A, and, we, and we snuck out the championship. Yeah. And that was, First ever was for the school. a tough summer league, too. I mean, it just shows you when you got tough competition that, you know, you got to figure out what to do. Rise, rise up. Um, I got some questions for you. So these may or may not be easy to answer. Well, I'll I'll try my best, even if I have to lie. Favorite daughter. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> right out of the gate. Your favorite daughter. Um, how about this? Favorite moment of your daughter's uh, in terms of sportsmanship? In terms of sportsmanship? Yeah. Does anything stick out? Um, I mean, they've always just been really good sportsmanship-wise, mm -hmm. you know? Uh, so yeah, I mean, nothing sticks out because I think it's always, always really good. I think one, one thing really sticks out. I think Marley and I were at a basketball tournament one time and, uh, you know, she was in playing club, mm -hmm. you know, and, uh, she was there and I think we had lost or something and, and, uh, you know, I was just trying to tell her that, uh, you know, the, that's why we play, you know, because that pain that you feel from losing mm -hmm. makes that Joy from winning just so much better. And uh, so she was. She worked it through. She worked it through. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And continued to compete. Do you, uh, does any comeback win most memorable that sticks out in your mind? Like some crazy comeback from any one of your girls' teams? Comeback win. Yeah. How about the ice in the veins? Yeah. No, I mean, d did we win that game? <laughs> yeah. Oh, really? Yeah, so uh, what Marley's playing for for Cal Baptist, and mm. so uh, I don't know, the coach get kicked out or something like that, and so oh, the, I was, the I think team I might had, have been at this game. The, the team had to rise up, mm -hmm. you know, without mm -hmm. the coach, and uh, yeah, Marley just started hitting, and you know, it was like one of those things where when you when you're in the zone, and that's uh, that's, that's one of the most fun things I think about sports is that when you find yourself in the zone and the basket just seems so big and everything's falling. And, uh, I do. So, I remember that. Well, yeah. to me, um, I didn't realize like that hadn't been going on because when I coached Marley, it's all she did was dominate the game. Right. And so then, but then, you know, you're playing college and it's right. a whole different gig. It's a and, different level. Um, um, and so then I was like, Oh yeah, I know that girl. Um, <laughs> my daughter, Sienna, uh, who I got to coach in some sports. Um, she had one of those, we were playing high school and we were way out in, uh, like 
beyond Lancaster. I mean, it's just like a really far drive at the school. They're called Paraclete. And we, and we hadn't beat them quite yet, but it was a big game. And we we're right there. And for the most part, Sienna was really good. Rebounder, put it back, but she won a big score. And we, she, all of a sudden, we were down six with a minute to go. And, and so we went into our fouling routine, which we had practiced. And she ended up hitting two jumpers and two free throws to push overtime. <laughs> and then got the main bucket in overtime. And I was like, what happened what? to you? It was like strapping yeah. Hoosiers. I was like, wow, <laughs> okay. So she dropped them all in, and that was kind of like, that's the one I always remember. Yeah. What um, sports venue do you remember as like being the most enjoyable? Forum. The Forum. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Um, what's your best road trip with your daughters on a, for some sports? Hmm, boy, I don't know. We didn't do a whole lot of road tripping, particularly for sports. Um, I mean, we did a lot of weekend tournament kind of thing, but you like going to watch, you know, pro sports. Yeah. Didn't really do a we didn't do a whole lot of going to as a Lake Havasu. Family your girls came out to Lake Havasu, didn't they? For that, for that highly prestigious um, Lake Havasu AAU beach right. volleyball tournament. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, I think that all of our money was kind of focused on having the girls play, and then we didn't have anything <laughs> left over for going to watch pros play. Can you? Do um, you remember uh, any other any other thing I might have forgot? Memorable win. Mm. I remember your uh, daughter Marley having to play the four on a college basketball team when she's a one guard. Yeah. And well, she could box out. <laughs> yeah, she could box out. <laughs> she's All right, really got, good at that. I got some rapid fires for you. <clears throat> okay. You ready? Mm -hmm. First pet. First pet was a cat. We had two cats, my brother and I, Puff and Pebbles. <laughs> <laughs> I had a dog named Pebbles. Uh, your first car? Uh, a gremlin. Ooh. Oh, yeah. boy. Favorite Little sports team as a kid? Uh, I probably would say the Lions. Yeah. Yeah, because I was a football person. Nick, well, you had a nickname as a kid? Did I? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I mean, they for football, um, because when I was running around like a maniac, then mm -hmm. uh, they <laughs> they nicknamed me after O.J. Simpson. They they called me the Juice. Oh, that's rough. That is rough. I know. <laughs> well, that's that's it was, it was I don't like to tell that It story. was before <laughs> it was, yeah. rocking him. Oh, okay. yeah, that was. Um, favorite board game? Favorite board game? You're an aficionado, so. Yeah. Uh, millions. Of board millions I, I, I mean, like a regular old board game would probably be a one called Landslide, but nice. uh, like, but backgammon, I like. That's probably one of the, right. one of my favorites. Um, favorite main dish? Uh, uh, just gonna have to go with um, pot roast. Favorite dessert? Favorite dessert? Uh, apple pie. Favorite movie? Favorite movie, uh, The Longest Yard. <laughs> favorite TV show, the original one, right? Yeah, the original. Burt Reynolds, one. yes. Oh, yeah. uh, favorite TV show? Uh, right now, I'm into the Vikings. <laughs> yes, you are. Yeah. Uh, favorite <laughs> musical group? Uh, oh boy, there's so many. I mm, think Queen. I know. Yeah. Uh, but uh, you know, Kraftwerk was highly influential for me. Do you have a favorite author? Uh, yeah, Kurt Vonnegut Jr. Oh, nice. Uh, favorite pro athlete? Favorite pro athlete ever? It could be ever. Um, that's a tough one. There's so many good mm, pro sure. athletes, but you know, probably you know, from all the stories that we were telling earlier, it'd have to be Magic Johnson. I know where you met your wife, so I'll ask you: What was your first date? Oh, <clears throat> first date. We went to Hollywood to the rainbow or oh, something like that yeah, the rainbow room rainbow room and i think mm -hmm. aerosmith was upstairs that night wow. or something like that yeah. so it was kind of there was a big buzz i i kind of i think i saw van halen there when i was a kid didn't know who they were yeah yeah i just knew that guitar player was good yep yeah, yeah. wow all right um so now the the hard part but i get it, because this is a special episode and we're celebrating um being a girl dad i'll give you one extra so we are the show of record for 80s television. Okay. Okay. And, and I, I vaguely we, remember some 80s television. So you, you, you'd either answer quiz questions from the Waltons. Wonderful story about a family through the Depression, through World War II in the hills of uh, All I Virginia. remember is them saying goodnight. Uh, another one would be The White Shadow, okay. one of the greatest TV shows of all time, where Kenny Reeves comes back to Coach Carver High School. Right. It's kind of um, like uh, Coach Rice going to coach at Yeshiva. Not, it's really similar. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, and then the third would be Magnum P.I. 
greatest television show of all time. Uh, I'm sorry I missed all those. Okay. The fourth option is you got some. I'll give you some Kobe trivia since we're celebrating Kobe as a father. So which do you choose? Um, I'm going to go with Kobe trivia. Okay, glad you chose that. (laughs) Considering we are celebrating him as a father. Yes. Are we ready? How many? uh, How many titles did Kobe win as number eight, and how many as number twenty-four? Uh, three is eight, two is 24. Sick. What college would he have attended had he not gone straight to the pros by his account? Hope College, Holland, Michigan. <laughs> <laughs> what, that one or? Or, I don't know. He came out of Pennsylvania, uh, Pittsburgh? He would have gone to Duke. He loved Duke. him some oh, Coach okay. K. Yeah. Um, what is uh, Kobe's middle name? It's not Bean. It is. It is. Kobe okay. Bean Bryant. Very good. And um, what high school did he go to and what city? Uh, well, it was Lower Marion. Very good. And uh, so I'm, I'm Pittsburgh. Uh, Philadelphia. Pencil, Philadelphia. Oh, you're, you're, you're right there. And your bonus question to really top it off, who was his prom date? <laughs> who was his prom date? That would have to be Vanessa. It was Brandy. Oh, that's right. right. Yes, yes, that's, that's why flashback. he was on Moesha all the time. Um, you got anything else you want to say to your daughters before we sign off? Uh, just that I love them, and I'm you know just happy to be their dad. I was so proud of being a girl dad. Yep. For uh, for all the the fun times that they had playing sports growing up. I mean, there's so many memorable times. Yep. Watch my girls play, and uh, you. you know, still today, just proud to have all these girls around me. Thanks, baby. Yeah, you're welcome. Thank you. Sports Stories with Denny Lennon is supported by the AAU. Find a local event and join at aausports.org. And remember, you can catch your favorite amateur sports live stream, replays, and highlights at ballertv.com. Sports Stories, along with East Bay, supports the Heroes Movement, a nonprofit that bridges the gap from mental or physical therapy to getting strong again through strength and conditioning workouts. This free service is available for any veteran of the United States Armed Forces. Visit heroesmovementusa.org for more information. Sports Stories with Denny Lennon is a production of Sports Stories, Inc. and is available on Apple Podcasts and YouTube or wherever you listen and watch. Don't forget to subscribe, rate, and give us a review. It really helps spread the word. You can find all our social media links, archives, and other info on our website at sportsstoriespodcast.com. Original music for Sports Stories is courtesy of Lennon Music Productions. Special thanks to the John R. Wooden Course and Wooden's Wisdom. Sports Stories staff includes Marley Rice, Teresa Dolan, Bob McCall, Michael Lennon, Sienna Lennon, Brad Lawson, Christine Jimbo, and Jake Downey. Check it out, book!